Hey, what's up guys, Austin back again. Today we're gonna to be taking a casual look at Dr. Chaos for the 8-bit Nintendo. Now, I know what you're probably already saying in your mind, man, Dr. Chaos, this is such a shitty game. And you know what, you're right, uh, because it is. It's not a fantastic game by any stretch of the word, but it is one of those games that can be mildly entertaining or even enjoyable if you know how to play the game. And I'll get into all that in just a little bit. But to reminisce just a little bit, first off, this was actually one of those games I bought as a kid. It was one of those $10 bottom of the barrel budget bin games. I bought at KB Toys. I think it was $10 brand new. I probably saved up a lot of money for it, uh, doing chores and uh, mowing neighbors' lawns and watering their flowers and crap like that. Lemonade stands, whatever. Uh, whatever I could do to make a buck back then. Um, this was like early 90s, uh, you know, I was probably 10 years old. I was doing whatever I could to buy Nintendo games between uh, Christmas and my birthday periods. Those are the only times I got Nintendo games from my parents. Uh, so I bought whatever I could get my hands on as cheap as I could when I was a kid. And Dr. Chaos was one of those games. And the second I got this game, I really had no freaking clue on what I was supposed to be doing. And for the longest time, I really despised this game. I really did not like it. None of my neighbors liked it either. None of us could figure out what to do in this game. You're basically thrown straight into this mansion with no guidance on what to do. You're pretty much just left to your own devices and you basically have to take a leap of faith in order to actually get an item that opens up the rest of the mansion for you. So what I'm gonna actually do here is kind of explain how the game works. I'm gonna sh talk about the HUD and the various types of uh, mode you go through to traverse through this mansion you're stuck in. But I'm gonna also show you exactly where to go at the very beginning of the game in case if you decide to try this game, you'll know where to go to actually somewhat enjoy this game, or at least uh, <laughs> pave the way to try to enjoy this game. You might still hate this game because really, even after you know what to do and uh, you know how to play the game, um, it's not the most polished game on the Nintendo. It's definitely rough in areas. It's kind of slow and plodding. It's not your Mega Man. It's not your Contra. It's not your even Metroid. Um, but it does have a lot of non-linear elements to it, and that's really the driving force uh, behind its novelty or its uniqueness or it being remotely enjoyable. So, to get right into the game and talk about the basics, uh, it's a side-scrolling platformer, and uh, like I said already, you're pretty much, when you hit the start button, you're thrown right into the very beginning of this mansion, and you're pretty much just left to your own devices. Now, up at the top left-hand corner of the screen, you've got your health bar, and you've also got your weapons, which by, I believe, hitting select, you can rotate through them. Now, you don't have any ammunition to start off with, so you're pretty much just left with this dinky knife, and uh, it's really not that useful. You gotta be really careful when you attack enemies with it. Um, but you, uh, as you traverse through this house, you will find a gun, a machine gun ammo, and you'll also find grenades. Now, be careful with the grenades, though, because when you throw them, regardless of where they land, when they explode, they hurt you no matter what. Uh, it's kind of like a last resort weapon, so make sure you have a lot of life when you decide to use them. Now you also have these items, and these items you'll actually find throughout the house. They'll actually allow you to go through other areas that you normally wouldn't be able to initially. For instance, there are these uh, areas you go to that are just lakes full of water, and you can't go through them because you'll drown if you go in the water. But I believe you find like a helmet or something like that, or a suit that lets you breathe underwater, which then lets you continue traversing through this mansion. Likewise, I think there might even be something that lets you jump higher. I don't even remember. It's been so long since I've uh, given this game a lot of time, probably the mid-90s. So anyways, uh, that's the basics of the game. You can jump, you can duck, you can attack while you're ducking. Uh, you can kind of control your jumps as well, which can be somewhat useful. And uh, now here's the other big the other big catch. What you can do is you can actually tap up in front of any door and you'll go into a first person sort of point and click adventure mode. And this is where the game uh, this is where the game is kind of interesting because you've got the 2D side scrolling part, but you've also got these uh, point and click adventure parts, which are kind of interesting. On the right hand side of the screen in the point and click adventure sections, you've got uh, various commands, you've got like get, you got open, you've got hit, etc. 
Now, uh, open, obviously will open up. Uh, it'll open up windows, doors, cabinets, etc. Sometimes there are weapons and health vials inside these cabinets, which are very useful. You definitely want to open up everything you can find. Tapping the get button will actually let you take the item. And now you've also got hits. Now what hit does, it basically lets you hit anything in the room. Now what you want to do is if you got a room that's got just a lot of blank wall space, you can use the hit function on it and tap your way on various parts of the wall. And what you'll eventually do is break through a piece of the wall, usually taking you to another room. Sometimes a ladder will appear and it'll take you to the basement, things like that. There's a lot of different things like that in this game. Now, to talk about uh, what to actually do at the very beginning of the game. Now, I've already talked about the basics. Uh, uh, I haven't really dived too much into the enemies and things like that, but I mean, that's not really necessary. They're enemies. You attack them, you kill them. Don't let them hurt you because they'll kill you. Okay, pretty simple, like any other uh, basic game of the era. But uh, to actually <laughs> to actually open up the rest of the game and to actually be able to progress through this game, you have to do one very specific thing at the very beginning of the game. You have to find a very specific item. It's some sort of sensor. Now what this sensor does is as you're traversing through the house in the first person mode, the point and click adventure part, uh, this little sensor will go off. And when the sensor goes off and you're in a very specific room while it's going off, that means you can usually travel through a window or you can travel through a cabinet into pretty much like an alternate universe or something like that. It sounds kind of crazy and it kind of is, but this is how you progress through the game. Once you go through these alternate universes, you go into basically other side-scrolling sections and levels and you'll fight a boss at the end of it. You'll find items which will let you go through further into the mansion. Now to get to this item, what you have to do is at the very beginning of the game, when you hit start, you're going to go to the third door. You're going to tap up on it. You're going to get to the point and click adventure section. And what you're going to look for is actually a lone window in a section where there's a couple furniture pieces. Okay, now you're going to find one window that I think is near the top right hand corner or the top left hand corner. What you want to do is find the window that is actually in the center of the room. But there's also going to be a couch and a cabinet and so forth all kind of connected together. And what you're going to do is open the window and then select the go command and click on the window. And what it's going to do, it's going to say, here we go. And what it's going to do is take you to an alternate universe kind of thing like I was already explaining. This is your very first side scrolling platformer level, sort of linear level with a little mini boss at the very end and your first item, which is the sensor. So that's how you start the game. And I'll show you the little boss and grabbing the sensor and things like that. And once you get that though, as you progress through other uh, adventure parts in the mansion, and, you know, the point and click adventure segments, the little sensor will go off. It'll start blinking rapidly. And in those cases, you'll find other levels of the mansion you can go to. Not just rooms, but other alternate universes, which like I said, lead to extra items, uh, special abilities and things like that. That's where the game gets actually kind of cool because like I already mentioned, similar to games like, uh, say, uh, Zelda 2, Metroid, Castlevania 2, those are the big three in the Nintendo that do this. Uh, in Dr. Chaos, uh, obviously, certain areas of the game are blocked off based on the abilities you have. So it's a non-linear game in that aspect, and I have to give, I guess, FCI, I think they're the ones who made it, I have to give them props because it's actually kind of cool. The problem is, is at the very beginning of the game, you basically got to take a leap of faith. I mean, what child or even any grown adult in his own right is going to pick, open up a window, pick the go command and see if he can go through the window. I, I don't know of anyone that would have ever bothered to try that. Uh, if you try that as a kid, you know, post a comment below, correct me, say, hey, I'm smart and you're a dumbass. That's, that's fine with me. But I owned this game for about a year as a kid, maybe two had no freaking clue and uh but once i did figure out what to do the game was actually kind of cool now the game itself is kind of it's not the most polished it's like i said before it's not your ninja Gaiden, your mega man or anything like that it's not super quick and uh once there's a lot of enemies on the screen it can get kind of slow it can slow down quite a bit and um enemy respawns they can respawn in repetitive manners the second you killed an enemy you'll notice him respawning maybe a few steps back 
and every time you kill him, he always respawns in the same spot very quickly, almost instantaneously. So uh, it could be a little annoying, but once you start finding items and opening up other areas of the mansion and start exploring the mansion more in detail, it's actually kind of cool and it's kind of addicting at the same time. So not a fantastic game by any means, but I think it's actually kind of a cool game if you enjoy that non-linear stuff. And uh, now that this is actually kind of the month of October, and this is my favorite time of the year, as you guys know, especially for videos and so forth, as you can probably tell by the title screen, Dr. Chaos is actually a horror-themed game. So it actually goes really well with the, the month of October, the whole Halloween theme. And uh, Dr. Chaos is actually one of the very few Nintendo games that actually freaked me out every now and then. Which that's one of the things it actually has going for it. It's actually kind of a creepy game in some senses. For instance, as you're traversing through this mansion, you're gonna find these really big enemies that just pop out of nowhere and you're, they just, it's, it's like WTF moments that just kind of like make you rethink like where you are in that game. So that's pretty cool. Not a whole lot of Nintendo games do that. Another thing that's actually pretty cool though is it also has that sort of Friday the 13th effect. If you guys have ever played Friday the 13th, and even if you didn't like the game, uh, you gotta admit one thing, when Jason popped out in that game, it probably scared the shit out of you at least once or twice. Because especially later on in the game or during the nighttime segments, when you're going through those third person uh, cabin sections, Jason would just pop out randomly and then start hacking and slashing at you. And it was it was intense. And just the ching 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 sound he made, or the game made, just like the movies, right when he popped out, it was just it would make you jump because you aren't expecting it. And the same sort of thing actually happens in Dr. Chaos. And again, very few Nintendo games uh, have this effect or this trait. And as you're going through the uh, point and click adventure sections, as you're just randomly opening up uh, cabinets and windows and doors and things like that. And even if you, you walk back and forth between uh, uh, different areas of the same room too many times, an enemy at random will actually pop out of a cabinet or a door or something like that and he'll chase you outside the mansion and usually you don't expect this and it actually makes you jump and now it can be kind of a pain in the ass once you're actually out in the hallway of the mansion and, and running away from this enemy but it's that scare factor that counts and again not many nintendo games are actually genuinely creepy but dr chaos actually manages to achieve that even the title screen alone uh, it, the, the title screen theme is actually kind of kind of catchy but eerie at the same time and with the whole lightning striking going in the background and the cheesy blood dripping from the logo uh, it's it's kind of neat so that's it guys I'm gonna go ahead and just wrap it up here you got the general idea I didn't really take too much footage from farther into the game is mostly just the very beginning of the game but uh, if you decide to play this game, you'll be able to discover most of uh, the rest of the mansion on your own rather than me spoiling it for you. So uh, it's a super cheap game. If you're really curious about it, you know, it, it won't break the bank to try it out. It might cost you $2 for a loose copy. It's not a rare game in any sense of the word, and it's not, uh, it's not expensive either. It's far from an expensive game. It's a very common game on Nintendo. I think it's a Nintendo age rates at probably a rarity one or a rarity two or something like that, meaning it's uber common. So, hey, if you want to give this game a shot, especially this month, it's October, it's nearing Halloween, give it a shot. Uh, you might not regret it. Uh, again, like I said, uh, don't get your hopes up. I don't think you're going to think it's a fantastic game. It can be enjoyable too once you know how to play it. So with that, guys, again, I'm Austin. I'm out. Thanks for watching. I'll be back with another video sometime soon. And uh, take it easy, guys.